it's time to throw those dreams of owning a home out the window because yes, you're gonna have to take a small loan to buy an RTX 6090 because boy, does it look like it's gonna be powerful? And yes, probably expensive. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously, and not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below other listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9-12% to depending on when you join. Also the week of Black Friday, November 22nd to December 2nd, Jawa was dropping epic deals every day from $300 off select custom PCs to RTX 4080s for just $550. Check Jawa daily to see what's featured. Okay, so the RTX 5090, that card, it's available, sort of, well above its MSRP, and if you can get your hands on one, well, it's a certainly very, very powerful graphics card. I mean, it can run basically all new games at pretty reasonable frame rates. In fact, a lot of games 4K hundreds of frames per second, but with these new Unreal Engine 5 games coming out with ray tracing, path tracing, and tons of unoptimization, well, some gamers are already itching to upgrade. Well, I got you covered because the RTX 6090, yeah, it looks like it's going to be an incredibly powerful leap, even over the RTX 5090. So if you don't have enough frames, well, let's go ahead and take a look at these specs so I can break down just how much you can expect out of this card. Now this kind of originated over on Twitter from the YouTuber High Yield where he actually broke down what he believed the RTX 6090 would look like and he believes it's gonna be based off of this Rubin chip that Nvidia debuted and suffice it to say it's gonna be an enormous GPU far surpassing the RTX 5090 but I actually didn't cover this when it came out because I wanted to wait for more information and it looks like the leaker as well as YouTuber Red Gaming Tech over on YouTube did finally corroborate this apparently his own source is saying that it is going to be something similar to what High Yield mentioned, so you can expect what I'm showing on screen now to be fairly close to the RTX 6090, but what does this actually mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's break it down. So if we take a look here at this chart that I've thrown together, we have all the RTX 50 series and hey, even the potential 50 Super Series, which might be delayed and we'll see how that might affect the RTX 60 series in just a moment here. But skipping ahead to the flagship RTX 6090, well, in theory, based off the specs that were shown, we can expect 256 SMs or streaming multiprocessors. You can think of them as the cores and that compared to the 170 on the RTX 5090, well, it's an enormous leap. How big of a leap? Let's do the math. Well, 256 over 170, that's actually nearly 51% more cores in theory over the RTX 5090. And that's going to lead to, yes, a very substantial performance uplift, but it doesn't stop there because these cores are going to be running at higher clock speeds. Why do I say that? Well, they're almost certainly going to be moving finally from the 4N or which is kind of a 5 nanometer TSMC process to a 3 nanometer TSMC process, which means they're going to be getting higher power efficiency as well as potentially up to 15% higher clock speeds could potentially be achieved, which means instead of 2.407 gigahertz on the RTX 5090, well, you should actually be expecting around 2.77 gigahertz on an RTX 6090 at its maximum configuration, assuming they go for that. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Now, they did also mention a 512-bit bus, which means once again, you can expect 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory, except for they could go as high as 30. 36 gigabits per second, and that would equal 2,304 gigabytes per second, a pretty substantial leap over the 1,792 on the RTX 5090. Also, you could see as high as 192 megabytes of cache in the RTX 6090. High yield was saying he's expecting 128 megabytes. I do believe it will be higher than that. And this would come in at the very least at 600 watts, even with the power savings and moving from five nanometer to three nanometer, it's gonna suck down a lot of power. But to be honest with you, I think they will cut it down slightly. So I don't think the 6090 is going to be quite this big. It could, and that's why I'm showing it to you, but I think they'll cut it down just a bit. So here's what I think the realistic 6090 will look like. I think they'll cut it from 256 to 240 cores. I think instead of maxing out the clock speed, they'll be a little bit conservative to save on power. So instead of 2.77 gigahertz, they'll go to 2.6 gigahertz. And then I think they'll do 32 gigabits per second instead of 36 on the memory, which means 
2048 gigabytes per second, not 2304. And I also think the cache will be around 160 megabytes and not the maximum potentially 192 that they could maybe do. So all of that would likely get them, you know, in a worst case scenario, 600 watts, which is absolutely wild. But I think they could actually potentially achieve 550 watts once again. So overall, a pretty substantial leap. I mean, we're still talking about a very huge performance uplift. How much? Well, let's take a look here. So I also have another chart which shows you the price, performance, and release date. And let's talk about the maximum configuration of the 6090. This thing would probably be north of $3,000, probably like $3,500. It would be insane, but it would in theory get you 75% more performance on paper as it would deliver 182 teraflops versus the 104 teraflops of compute performance the 5090. Now, in reality, I'd probably expect around 50% more gaming performance as it's not going to scale perfectly. That's a pretty insane amount. Now, this would probably also release sometime around quarter one of 2027. But as I mentioned earlier, the RTX 50 Super Series, if it's not canceled, it's at the very least delayed, it sounds like, based on leaks and rumors. So if that turns out to be the case, well, then the RTX 60 Series may also get delayed a month, three months, six months, it's possible it could be even slightly longer than that. So we'll have to wait for more information to nail down the release date exactly before I'm confident in telling you it'll for sure be quarter one of 2027 still at this point in time. However, let's talk about the realistic configuration for the 6090, because I think they're gonna cut it down as mentioned earlier. So this thing, I think they would actually go for around $3,000. And yeah, that's insane. You're gonna be having to put off that home purchase to never. And then also you're gonna be, you know, maybe be listing a kidney or two to make this happen, but this configuration would still deliver on paper 54% more performance than the RTX 5090. And in realistic gaming scenarios, when GPU bound, I would expect actually around 40% more performance in 4K gaming out of the RTX 6090 versus the RTX 5090. And yeah, I'll hold to that. I really do believe that's roughly what you're gonna see, plus or minus maybe five or 10%. You know, maybe it could be as low as a 30% improvement. Maybe it could be as high as a 50% improvement, but I think you're gonna see somewhere close to 40% more performance out of this GPU just based on leaks as well as the math. The math would tell you it's gonna be somewhere close to that. So there's where the RTX 6090 should be. Are you excited? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.